On August 29, 2005, Category 5 Hurricane Katrina swung past New Orleans, driving a storm surge that breached four levees and flooding 80% of the city. Hundreds were killed and thousands were trapped for days in harsh conditions before state and federal rescuers came to their aid. Through all that, New Orleans remains a city of rich culture, proud people, and entrenched neighborhoods that have survived and thrived against the odds. The people of New Orleans have always held tight to their unique culture, pride, music, cuisine, and festivals. And tourists from around the world just can't stay away. Alright, Fever Television is on the street here on Canal Street. We found Cami. Cami, where are you from? Where have you traveled to? Tell Chicago, us a little bit about your Chicago, Illinois. Yes. Woo -woo! All the way down to New Orleans today. Uh, I'm kicking it down here with my friends. Uh, we've been here since Saturday. Yeah. And what's been like your highlight of the whole Mardi Gras experience? The beads. What's with the beads? Like, what is the obsession with the beads? I don't know, but I, I keep trying to get more you and more. You have so many. She is Jägermeister. You have Jägermeister beads. Yes, They're a amazing. lot. Thank have you eaten anywhere awesome or had any great experiences since you've been in New Orleans? I've eaten at Willie's. Um, I'm not really too crazy about the crawfish, you know. Okay, okay, yeah. I don't do seafood it's like different. that. But it is yeah. different. Yeah. Okay, uh, and what are you, when are you leaving? What's your plan from now until you go home? I'm leaving tomorrow, so hopefully on our way back, we won't catch another that snow. <laughs> I know. I know. Back home, I'm, we're from Toronto, so if you've is from Toronto, and we know we understand the Chicago weather. We right, it's a lot warmer. I know, Amazing. I know, but uh, hey, I'm having a good time. So now we are standing in a place that isn't as visually appealing as Bourbon Street or Canal Street or the party, but. Um, has a lot of history and very close to home in the sense of this is the port of New Orleans and this is a place where um, families and facilitators of slavery used to bring in their slaves from the water and uh, come onto the mainland of New Orleans. But this also uh, definitely has a, a weird interesting story, or I shouldn't say weird, but it's just an interesting story of um, little points of how Mardi Gras sort of came to be. Um, they say here, so there, so there are a couple parades uh, that went on yesterday and that have been going on through throughout the couple weeks here in Carnival. A uh, couple of the parades are Super Cruise and Zulu. Now, Super Cruise was definitely taken over by the Caucasians and they were a little bit more popular uh, in regards to the white uh, sector. And then the Zulu parade was actually one of the first establishments of, of blacks and um, and, and black natives being able to have their establishment within the New Orleans parade and it says in 1949 Louis Armstrong uh, was crowned in 1949 as the king of the Zulus and I definitely know that Zulu we were saying earlier is uh, is stemmed from an African is stemmed from an African name so there is a lot of African heritage that that is here within Mardi Gras and New Orleans um, yesterday I had made a statement in regards to the beads and the colors that represented the New Orleans festival and just to stand corrected. Uh, the three colors are the green, the purple, and the gold, and they represent faith, power, and uh, justice. So I am, those are the, that's the fact of, of the colors that remain within the beads, and those are the colors that represent the festival and the carnival, and they were established by Rex, and that is another, another parade uh, that was going on 
during yesterday. And then we come along, and I think this is probably the most interesting thing because I don't think people, when they're like, yeah, Mardi Gras, let's go and let's party and let's have a great time, how much history they're really involved in. Um, it says here that in 1857, that was the first organized Mardi Gras parade. That is almost uh, 150 years ago. Like 150 years ago was the first Mardi Gras here in New Orleans. To think that that's how long the carnival season has been going on, it just kind of blows your mind. And then really the question of what we've been asking everyone is like, why are beads thrown? Why are people so intrigued? Why are women bearing themselves and are curious to know why beads are thrown? And it's really, it's just a historic token that Mardi Gras goers used to be on their route and they would give out confectionery items that says they're like sugar-coated almonds and bonbons. So they've obviously transitioned into not throwing candy, but having something that sort of represents the festivity and the, the light here. And that's why they give out the beads. It's really just a very old tradition in 1838, it says, and they've just carried it on. Um, and then I think the thing that blew my mind the most was the fact that the very first point of Mardi Gras was marked in the New World in 1699. So 1699 here in New Orleans, in the US, around the world, this goes on. So the next time you're planning on going to Trinidad or Africa, or you're gonna come here to NOLA, um, remember that you are carrying out history and you're moving forward with history. And you know, this, uh, this is a, a sense of freedom and remember that that you've really, you're a part of something that lives on. So here at the Port Harbor in New Orleans, uh, lots of history, very close to home. We just wanted to give you, FIFA television goers, just a little bit of facts in regards to how this all started. Canal Street. We've been up and down Bourbon. We finally found some ladies. We've been talking to quite a few gentlemen lately. Where are you girls from? Chicago. Chicago. Yes. And uh, what made you guys come down to Mardi Gras? Obviously to party, but what inspired you to sort of come down for the festival? Oh, to get some beads. <laughs> the culture. I love New Orleans um, from alternative spring break. So I just love it here. So the beads, the food, yeah. Bourbon Street, the drinks, to be able to walk around and drink liquor, everything. Yes. Is there anywhere that you guys have eaten that you love? I went over to Dini's and had like their stuffed shrimp. It was unreal. What about yourself? We, um, I like a local spot. <laughs> I, it's called the Project Grocery Store. They have good. <laughs> yes, that's what it's called. But they have really good food there. Red beans and rice on Monday. Yes. When do you guys uh, When do you guys leave? What are you gonna do before you go home? Um, we're probably gonna souvenir shop. Yeah. Um, walk the strip when it's not crowded. This is your first Mardi Gras? This is my first Mardi Gras. First, lot of your first. Amazing. So nice to meet all you ladies. Have a safe travel back to Chicago. Enjoy the rest of Mardi Gras and happy. Thank you. Cheers. After a full season of carnival time, we are in the madness of it all, of USA. This is Fat Tuesday on Bourbon Street. You've heard about it. You've read every single watermelon like Beyonce. You've probably heard so much about it. You've never been here, but FIFA Television has brought you into the heart of it all. This is where the real party is. We're talking beads. We're talking the festivities. We're talking drinks and a good time, and everyone's so collective, and we're just, we're really ending our carnival season here, and we're so happy that we came into the heart. We've all been having a good time in the last like few hours how are you feeling you having it feeling very good i love i'm done i want to give a big shout out to toronto again once again you're watching fever tv you already know from live from new york city from the bronx shout out to baden this is going to be baden yes yeah. there we go yeah. 